bow, bow, chicka, wow, what's up, Chris? <laughs> and we're back. What's going on, Andrew? That was my oh. coming back from the commercial break sitcom little thing. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of WandaVision lately, and they kind of mm. have commercials intertwined in the episodes, and the commercials are pretty cool. They sort of tell a little bit about like what Wanda's going through without getting into any spoilers, but mm. a lot of the music sounds just like that. Like I would imagine sort of fleshing it out with like a kit that's pretty much, you know, like a six second track. So I think you nailed it. And thank you. With thank that, you. I've, yeah. learned, I've learned that that's called a slice in the oh, okay. scoring world. Look at you. Where'd you learn that? Uh, Studying late that... night and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, I learned that on the uh, Fake Doctors Real Friends podcast. Oh, okay. You seem you know, to learn a lot from that show. I do. They talk about a lot. Cool. Well, uh, we have a lot to talk about today. I would say it's so. True. We have a lot to yeah. talk to. We do. We have uh, a two piece on the episode on the podcast today. This episode is going to be with Wolf Club. They are a UK based synth pop synth wave group, and I'll let them further elaborate on that because I do think that they actually, while borrow a lot from that specific two genres, I think they kind of do things with it that a lot of the other artists in their field don't and I, I'm I have questions about their sensibilities where they kind of come from as musicians, their backgrounds. And I think we're just going to explore a lot of that stuff today, as well as, you know, us guys, who knows where the conversation will take us. So this is another episode of Talking with Andrew and Chris. That's Andrew. I'm Andrew. I was sorry. waiting for you sorry, to say dude. that. I'm Hello. Sorry. Turn the lights on. We're, we're, we're doing this here. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's Andrew, I'm in here. case he forgot. I'm Chris. And today we are very thrilled and honored to be chatting with both members of Wolf Club. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the show. Woo! Hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, welcome. Do, all good, well. all good in the UK. Hell yeah, good, man. Good. We're we're excited. We've had a few uh, folks from the UK on the show. Uh, actually, we had another uh, synthwave um, two piece. Are you guys familiar with New Arcades at all? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah good, great. Good, good friend. Yeah, good friends with the guys as well. In fact, um, Adam from New Arcades uh, was a sound engineer on one of our gigs. Uh, it was our last gig, which is ages ago. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, supporting uh, Ollie in uh, Camden. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great time, wasn't it? But yeah, yeah, like I can't believe that was now. our last gig, which which was last. When when even was that? <laughs> it, was it, was November, like, no, it was November the eleventh, I think. It's burned his November the eleventh, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Last time we yeah. last time we did a gig, which is I just when the can't believe died. you're saying it, but. Yeah, when everything, <laughs> when the world collapsed. <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I know we spoke a little bit about it pre-show, but I'm for, I'm sure that our audience is curious, like, how have you guys been holding up throughout the whole quarantine and whatnot? You guys been all right, or? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. It's been, we've been able to sort of write with each other remotely, which has been fun, because um, Chris has been based in Greece for a bit of lockdown and came back to the UK. So we've kind of been emailing back and forth little ideas and getting stuff, you know, little songs and ideas finished, which has been fun. Yeah, for sure. The same for me. Like I, now more than ever, I feel like music's been. Like, I feel really blessed to have it in my life. Like where you can't even go out, go for a meal, see friends, or whatever. Where actually, like I'm sat in the same room where I do a lot of the writing and recording anyway. So I had a good chance just to sort of really focus down on it. And I mean, the amount of stuff we've recorded in the last year is crazy. But, um, yeah, never, never had so much, have we? Never, never made so much sort of content. And... Yeah, because I mean, I've, oh. because I haven't really been able to do anything else, and I love doing it. So, so in that sense, great. I mean, it's not great for the world, and then oh, God, can't wait for things to start opening up and stuff. But in in general, feel really lucky to to be able to sort of still do what we do. Totally, and I think it's. I think people have been enjoying, especially with our show. At least, uh, there's been a lot of positive reception around, like having guests on who have been productive during the quarantine and sort of made something of it. I think it gives people like some positivity and so and you know a little pep in their step. So that's uh, that's good to hear. And, and you guys do have an album coming out this year, March fifth, the first half of a two part record called what was it? Just drive. Uh, just drive, yeah. Just drive part one uh, out in March fifth, and then yeah, part two. Sometime later in the year, I don't think we've nailed on a date yet, have we? But hopefully late summer, I think, if all goes to plan. And that's uh, the fruits of this labor that you put in over the quarantine lockdowns. Pretty much, I yeah. I think I think we had part one done. Probably was that just before? I'm trying to think now. Before lockdown or lot? Yeah, of, certainly tracks done. We just from had, that album. yeah, we just had loads and loads of songs, and it just gave us a good chance to sort of hone in on what we wanted to do, and really a good chance to sort of get even more stuff out um this year and we've even really started writing post these two albums um recently as well 
So yeah, we'll we'll see. I think, like Steve said, just part two, hopefully in sort of late summer, and then we'll we'll see what happens next year. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you guys are definitely quite prolific. You have two albums from 2020 alone, and uh, I've struggled to put out, I think, over 30 songs in my 15 years of being uh, someone who's professionally pursued music. So we'll get into yeah, all I that think, type of stuff. I think, I think when we, we signed a contract to put out a certain number of songs out, and that was that was kind of hard. So I feel you, Chris. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, we, and that was singles, guys. We had a, a singles one-year deal. <laughs> And to, to put out 12 singles was difficult, let alone the amount that you guys pump out. But I'm very excited. The new artwork is really awesome. Um, it, to me, it just already shows progression, kind of getting away from like the more neon palette. It, it's still very cinematic, but we, we can obviously uh, talk about all that a little later on in the show, what, what we can expect from the new record. But to start, for guests of ours who who might be coming from our side of things we we normally traditionally interview i guess more organic based um music and it's it's hard to talk about you guys because there are so much guitar and uh keys that that aren't you know pads or, or bells or things like that in your mixes but i think you are rooted in synth wave and synth pop to start so for, for our audience who's kind of like still getting used to this style of music that we're exposing them to the synth wave synth, synth pop world why don't you take us back to like the very beginning the inception of the band what kind of inspired you guys to take this route and to jump into like this world of sort of like electronic music and just just like spare no expense like any details you can give us are, are more than welcomed here sure yeah so um i think initially um when I was younger, I was in bands like guitar based bands and doing that kind of thing. And then as time went on, I started to explore more sort of electronic kind of stuff, uh, just writing little demos, really, you know, little three minute tracks and things. Chris was doing things separately. So he was doing sort of singer songwriter stuff, would you say, Chris? Like, you know, acoustic based yeah, yeah, sure, writing. Yeah. And then um, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I remember sending some, you know, short tracks to Chris to see what he thought of them uh, over a decade ago, probably, you know. Yeah, probably, Maybe yeah. 10, 10, 12 years ago. Um, he kind of came back with some ideas for the vocals, and then we sort of, you know, ha had these little tracks that we didn't really do anything with for a long time. Uh, and then as time went on, we kind of built on them and then sort of, you know, explored different synth sounds and different uh, different ways of writing, and eventually it just became Wolf Club. For about five or six years ago, I think it kind of solidified into what we are now, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. I think for me, it's like, like Steve just said, I... I was very much into um, like acoustic singer songwriter stuff. Um, Steve very much, a bit, I, I guess a bit more metal now, Steve. Yeah, metal at one point. Yeah, probably indie, yeah. Actually, indie rock. I imagine. Yeah, indie yeah. Rock. And then I've been known metal, to play you know? a couple metal showcases back in the day. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we were in like a uh, a bluesy sort of like folk rock band, but oh, I wow. just came nice. up through the punk rock uh, scene, the hardcore scene to be exact, and so that was how I knew how to get shows. So we were like, <laughs> we've played more than our fair share of shows with bands that look like a, a cheap Kiss ripoff. Nice, <laughs> nice. I think, and I think from from sort of somewhere in the middle, I guess like is like Deftones type. Broken yeah. social take, scene, that's like old Sunday. rock, taking back Sunday, Sunday pumpkins, kind of all those sort of bands where we probably had a little bit more in, in common of what we loved. Mm -hmm. And then we, we tried briefly to be that sort of band, I think. Um and we yeah, it, it, it was okay. It was it was all right, but it's but then I think and Steve will talk about this more, but I think the transition into synthwave or synth pop, etc. did I mean Steve's got more of a production background. And for me, it was, uh, this is so cliche, but it was the Drive film and the Drive soundtrack. And, and, and I bet, but yeah, great movie, an amazing soundtrack. And probably 99% of synthwave bands would probably say that has a, like some kind of influence on them. But that lift scene when um, Real Hero comes on, I was just like, I didn't know what this sort of music was. And then I was in Greece at the time and I was getting sent these synthwave tracks like, every day from Steve and Tim who joins us when we play live and I was just this whole world of like music was just like blowing my mind and I think it is synthwave for me does seem to cross over that acoustic sort of singer songwriter heavy melody almost emo almost deft tones like alt rock sort of like melting pot of all those things which is which are all my favorite music types so I just fell in love with it got completely addicted to it 
and and I still am. Um, and then I, yeah, I get, I, and I guess the the synth pop side of it, just I, I love pop as well. So it's um, that that's where we're at. Well, that's where that was my journey with it. Yeah, I think you know it's uh, what hearing you say that what comes through in your music is uh, there is sort of that. <laughs> guitar based uh background to a lot of your songs like i honestly feel that with your music if you just sort of swapped out like the classic 80s bounce bass and had a regular bass guitar just doing like eighth notes and if you just you know swapped out the electronic kit with the real kit i mean you have indie rock smashes you know it's not too far off from from being sort of in 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 some regards like if you look at songs like runaway uh for example like some of those songs on that album i i think it's what your singer does as well too um and that's very interesting she's not in the band by the way i want to talk about that i I mean i'm not sure if it's multiple voices across multiple songs or it is yeah there's i think we've had about 10 different uh vocalists in total working on our track so yes it's it's a big mixture some of them like to be uh, known as who they are featuring you know in the songs which we'll be doing more uh, of the next Mm -hmm. album as well uh but some kind of prefer to do their own sort of projects and just do it as like a kind of ghost vocal. So that's, that's the reason okay. behind that. Cause, cause I honestly genuinely feel that you guys, while you could open up for like more of the traditional synth wave artists, like the midnight or, you know, D- time cop. I also think that there are some of those artists like them that would be kind of out of place on a Heim tour. Whereas you guys could probably open up for like a band like Heim or, oh, that'd be um, amazing, yeah. you, you know, and that, that's what I meant by saying that like you, you guys kind of flirt, with a lot of other genres inside of synthwave. So now hearing you guys reference your inspirations and some of the music you listen to, it, it makes a lot more sense. And was that like sort of a natural decision or was that something you guys chose to do to try and stand out above the crowd? Uh, because I think we all know synthwave is a very growing and, and now I would dare say oversaturated genre. Hmm. I'd say probably a bit of, a bit of both really. Yeah. Um, I guess I, you know, I can't play the keyboard so I can only play the guitar. So a lot of the time I do write a song on a guitar first, then kind of transpose it into, um, you know, uh, the, the simp sort of sounds uh, using the electronic equipment and everything. So it does, it kind of, eventually I got to the point where I was like writing a riff and then I think, well, actually I think it just sounds good for the guitar. And if I add that in together with the simps and uh, the bass and everything, it kind of had like a natural kind of fit. It kind of gave it like a different texture to a lot of like the artists that you hear around. So I thought it would be quite interesting to explore that more for sure. Yeah, sure. And I guess I think, well, for both of us, we both, um, our first instruments were guitar. So our, our songwriting, you know, progression started on playing guitar and writing songs on guitar. I still write songs on guitar and then send them to D and then see what happens with them. So I guess that love of guitar is always probably going to be there and probably even more so on the new album, D. Yeah, it's probably got even more guitars yeah. than, than we've ever had. I think um, every track on this, on the new one, whereas the, on the new ones, it's like, every, you know, every other track kind of thing. Um, yeah even if it's if it's low in the mix there's still like a little bit of guitar i think in every single song okay but how many tracks have saxophone on them oh uh can we say i'm sure we can say it, three, so it three? Was originally, yeah four? it was originally it was originally four it was originally four but then uh i think we switched sadly we switched out the saxophone uh on one of the tracks and replaced it with a guitar solo instead because it didn't quite work for some reason something about it, it didn't quite fit together sadly if you can't get sax, then a guitar solo is pretty much <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just solo, as it is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We've got some big lead riffs. We've got some big lead guitar. Probably the biggest lead guitar solo stuff we've 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 ever had as well. Yeah, I think that'll be on the first track. That's when the album's released officially because it's on pre-order now at the moment, so you can get it from uh, Bandcamp and what have you. Um, I think when the album's released, the first track that's coming out is is the one with the big uh, guitar solo, which is. Pretty nice, yeah. Pretty nice to have it yeah, in there. Yeah, that's good. And, and your saxophone player is, I, I hope it's not a VST because it doesn't sound like a VST to me. And I like to think I have a, a pretty solid ear where I can tell like the VST good sax or whatever it's called, that plug-in yeah. versus like I've someone's actually it. ripping. Uh, so it's yeah. actually someone real, right? Yeah, someone real, yes. Yeah. So it's a okay. session musician. I think he was from Mexico. I kind of um, scoured the internet for different saxophone players. Um I'm trying to think how I think I must have listened to about 700 different uh, you know uh <laughs> saxophonists in the end just trying to find someone who was quite right I was like no that guy's not really because you know saxophone's amazing but sometimes it can not overpower but you know it can become a bit too fiddly or it hasn't really got much of a melody whereas this guy when I heard some of his demos was just he kind of like really you know got like a really melodic sort of tone to the parts and then in the sea of stars which is the first single released he kind of 
but kind of underplayed it almost so it's very much a backing instrument so it's only in a few sections of that track and i thought what he did was just amazing so yeah we just uh got him on a couple of tracks and i got one other guy i think from i think he was from new york uh to rip out another lead on another lead saxophone on i think track number five as well so yeah you're in for a treat when it if you're in if, if you're in the mood for sax you're in for a bit of a treat uh, what am i, I like not here <laughs> yeah right uh exactly. no that's uh that that sounds really cool man um you know speaking of the underplaying thing um not that t they're the same in regards to like the feeling that the songs evoke i think that um because what comes to mind in that song because I, I did kind of notice that it was very you know layered throughout uh sporadic throughout but i thought it was very enjoyable as you said kind of very nice and and very like it just added like a nice lushness to the mix when it was there but it wasn't always there. It reminded me of that song, Who Could It Be Now? Um, by Men at Work. And the story of that song is they had him hop in there for the sax solo and he was just warming up and they happened to have the mic rolling while they were warming up. And, and he was like, he ripped that little like solo, which isn't really that much. It's just enough though to like accent that part of the song so perfectly. And they went mm -hmm. with it. Of course, the saxophone player fought them at at odds for like weeks <laughs> in the studio because he's like, that was just my warm up. Come on, guys. And the producer's like, no. Oh, that man. was fine. That was what we need. That good. So Being I got that, that kind of vibe good, yeah. from that performance in that, which t coming from me, that's like, a, that's one of my favorite songs. I'd say that's like, you guys did a really good job finding that, that player. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do wonder actually, cause um, when he sent over the past, I think he must've sent over maybe 10 different lines and I tried different ones. And there were, there were, there were, you know, there were some that were kind of really, uh, you know, kind of really took hold of the track, which were good. Um, and then there were those sort of more subtle kind of like, yeah, just, melodic kind of like counter counter melody to the main vocal um so i do yeah you do wonder if it, it, this dude sort of tinker around and then just record little bits and stuff um i don't think i ever do that on the guitar sadly because i don't think i'm good enough that i could just mess around and it it turn out all right <laughs> i have to really focus and i hear you know. that that's not true guys as well that's not true steve can shred, shred? It. okay <laughs> everyone who shreds, shreds, yeah. shreds i should have known yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm not too bad it is weird if like you shred and you're just like oh bro I shred unless you're like Eddie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, normally you don't shred. That's yeah. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to um I kind of wanted to jump into something real quick because you know earlier in the conversation I guess to me it kind of seemed like just by hearing and listening by your influences you know that you guys kind of flirt with synthwave but maybe you never fully considered yourself synthwave but it seemed like you guys kind of said the opposite so how about you describe sort of your sound because i get a lot of different elements in your sound and it's it's not necessarily purely synthwave but i'm curious to hear you guys talk about it because i do think you're one of the characteristically different bands in the genre that is very saturated oh thank you well um i would say we are kind of like retro wave synth wave um i guess it's kind of interesting isn't it really because i suppose at one point synth wave kind of mostly took its inspiration from the 80s but as I guess as like it progressed, that kind of started to bleed into late eighties, early nineties, and then if you look at the early nineties, you kind of come across all these kind of different um, indie rock and like rock grunge metal bands as well. So I kind of yeah, kind of mixing those things together. I don't know if I wouldn't say I don't know if we sound particularly eighties, but I do think that we kind of take the instrumentation that sort of kind of analog synth sounds uh, from like you know movies from soundtracks from that period and that, that kind of thing. And blend that in with those other elements, like you were saying. But yeah, I don't. I don't always know if if I've, if I've tracked stupid to sound that eighties. What do you think, Chris? I, I mean, think sometimes, it's, yeah. It's but... it, it's the it's like the quintessential eighties. You know, the sax and all that. Sort of, but I think I think we try and, or at least like with like vocal lines and stuff. I always try and like delve a little bit into the new wave stuff as well. Like I'm I'm a massive fan of the Cure. And in fact, we. I mean, back in the day when we were in the studio like the the uh the engineer told me to stop sounding like you you just like you, like I'm doing an impression of him <laughs> so I remember not that. with the yeah. hair but, told you but <laughs> um yeah but but so so those like you know like the cult and those like 80s like power guitar bands as well um and new wave and all that sort of stuff which I guess sort of delves into synth wave as well I I don't really know if we're synth wave or retro i mean our label's called new retro wave so you know i guess we we, we have to have like a we, we definitely are we have elements of retro wave for sure i don't even know i mean i'm not even sure if i know what synth wave is really it's you know it's right so it, with, things, you could it? put you could put any word in front of wave and it's a genre so. yeah for <laughs> sure so, <laughs> so true. Yeah, it's new so wave. yeah like if you imagine how can it be that a band like electric youth and a band like dance dance with the dead are the, are right. the same genre 
but they are you know it's so fascinating that it's just so wide open really which is something that i really love which can, is amazing yeah. as well yeah, that's yes. what i mean yeah, yeah it's all amazing these, you can like... be so different there's such and, a kind of where... freedom in this genre that i don't really yeah, find in, sure. in most genres you know yeah yeah for sure and where, like you said earlier about being saturated and i get that and you do hear a lot of stuff which is maybe a little bit similar um so you know if we can throw in some big guitars and sax and whatever and melod and vocal melodies and different things then great but yeah in answer to you synthwave I, I do sometimes get a little bit lost with what synthwave really means i, right. I hope that doesn't sound like deep i'm not trying to be deep with that no i understand that it's, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. it's, like, yeah, it it's funny that you guys were questioning whether you're 80s or not because i was having the same question earlier exactly I, I think that's what albums. i was trying to was say like, earlier when i asked them i was like <laughs> i was like i know that this is like supposed to sound like it's the 80s but like why yeah. does it sound like it's the 80s like it's that like i was completely yeah. right because it's yeah. like you have the 80s sounds and the 80s tools but then it's like you don't play them the way that the 80s bands played them so it's like your brain is like oh 80s kind yeah of? i guess I that's, that. I guess that's yeah. the goal really Steve. yeah right i guess that's the goal yeah. of what we're trying to do like like is is there some kind of like nostalgia driving around there but it's it more also like a sounds time a little capsule. bit yeah which is i mean perfect yeah that's exactly what we're yeah. it's like you're not taking me back you're bringing you're bringing that here you know and yeah you know, yeah as, absolutely. Um, yeah yeah as like a, a musician and a fan really of music bad. i've probably been listening to you guys you know on and off for about two years now i think that's one of the reasons i keep coming back to you guys so oh, really? I, I think yeah. it's like a solid solid strength to be honest to uh, carve out your own yeah i'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Chris only wanted to do this show to talk to all of the artists on Spotify that he really likes. <laughs> so there's a gone. part of that. <laughs> yeah. Good way in. <laughs> uh, I just think there's so much to be learned from like exchanging ideas with uh, musicians, especially ones that you enjoy. But speaking of that, we've we've kind of talked about your sound. We've talked around your sound. Now I'm curious as to like your process, how you guys come up with your sound. Um, and maybe if something changed post, you know, COVID and, and before, like, how has everything come together for you guys? And and I guess the second part, has the pandemic affected the creative process? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Yeah. So I guess how do we, we usually start a track for the most part? Um, I'll come up with like a little bit of music. Um, so I use Logic Pro Pro X, which is like, um, like a like a door that you can use. It's pretty, pretty decent. I'm sure those people listening will, will use that as well. Um, so I usually, yeah, experiment with some sort of different chords, some different synth sounds, um, kind of have it in a very rough form, then send it across to Chris for him to write some vocals to, um, occasionally I write the, write the vocals as well, we kind of, but then I'll knock it, knock ideas around to Chris as well. Then he bounces it back. But I didn't, I'm, I wonder if the, uh, the, the pandemic has affected our process. I, th then, I think the only way it's affected us really is maybe that it's made us work more possibly because like Chris said earlier, that we just had more time to do it. Um, I guess I, would, I do miss being in the same room as Chris, so we can, you know. Of course you do. Of course nice. I do. You know, you <laughs> uh, like you know, just being able to bounce ideas off each other straight away. Whereas you know, there's often a bit of a delay. Although actually, it's, we're getting better at sort of, you know, having like the evening we will be writing. So I can send him something, and he'll come back within an hour and say, you know, that's rubbish. Try again, or um, you know, maybe add this, take away the drums, or whatever. Um, yeah, so, yeah, sure. I think. Like ultimately, it I think it works well with me and Steers because we write in loads of different ways, and there's a, we haven't just like got one fixed way of right. Well, is this is this bang? And so it might be that Steers played a track on guitar and sent it to me. It might be I've done a track on guitar. It might be an old track that I've done on piano, and I thought like maybe we can work this into something. And maybe we've written a track about like you know just a random TV show or something just to see if we can get some ideas going. But in terms of the pandemic, a little bit like we discussed earlier, it's been it's it's been productive for us. Like we've 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 hammered it. The the only thing we've changed in terms of like production is I've upgraded like my home equipment uh, because we used to spend a lot of time in the studio because we found it difficult to really um, to really nail I guess vocals really more than anything to the vocal mm -hmm. quality outside outside of the studio that we used that was closed so. Yeah, I, I upgraded a little bit of that. Well, we both upgraded um, some of the equipment that we used to, see, to to get it to a level where we can release it without getting into a studio. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think what that's you have exactly to do in these did. crazy times. Take, take <laughs> the power in your own hands. That's pretty much exactly what happened to us. 
Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We, were meet, we were meeting up at a studio to do the show together in the same room also, even though it wasn't video at all, which is kind of mm. funny. <laughs> and then the pandemic the happened days. And, and we couldn't meet up. So Chris was like, hey, I found this thing called StreamYard. I'm like, tight. And now it's kind of better <laughs> than it was before. And for me, and then this... I also had to buy a webcam and a better microphone and everything. So like it all works out, I guess, as long as you spend the time wisely. Yeah, yeah, and for sure. me, this this whole studio behind me was built during the, the quarantine because, Amazing. you know, I, I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything, and I wanted to be productive. Looks pretty, uh, looks pretty my, cool. My father and I, he's the handyman, um, yeah. and I said, I was like, hey, this is where I want that to be put. <laughs> Shout out, Paul. <laughs> but uh, this desk right here in front of me, you guys can't see. We actually did, uh, you know, sand it and all that stuff. And so it was like a really cool process, and that only came out of, like, not being able to go to a studio, not being able to meet up with Andrew to work on music, but wanting a way to still send him demos, send him stems. So I think a lot of people, because a lot of our audience are sort of people who are where Andrew and I are at, where, you know, we're, we're just still trying to get there. We've, uh, we've had quite a journey, but we're not quite where we want to be yet artistically, or they're a little bit further behind. So I love this type of like, do it yourself, take it into your own hands type of scenario that you guys fought and conquered. So, well, that's, that's, I guess that's why this, this genre, which I, you know, which we love so much is so so open for that isn't it i kind of love i know people do say that it's oversaturated and you know there are so many different bands doing what they do and different artists and stuff but it's kind of great that it's it's there and that the genre kind of encourages that so you know um i don't think i would have started if if if, if it had been overly complex if that makes sense at the time i just kind of saw it as being something that i could start you know ease myself into then just get a little bit better each time so i started you know maybe 20, I'm quite old now, so about 20 years ago, I think is when I first started to make music for computers. Um, so yeah, I, I love the fact that people can take it in their own hands. It's something you can, you can mostly, for the most part, do at home uh, and sort of just experiment and try different things. So this, you know, that's one you know fantastic part about this this genre. Yeah, totally. And so you guys were talking about the studio that you would go to, but obviously it got shut down. So now you have your yeah. own sort of uh, you know means at, at your own houses. Uh, but my question is. Do you guys mix and master your own material or do you normally outsource for that? Is that the reason why you were going to the studio or was it just like the environment you found you found was was helpful and, and more conducive to a better product? Uh, sort of talk us through that there. I'm curious. Yeah, sure. So um, so I think initially we'd always have um, the final mix and master done at the studio, which is a place in Derby. It's now moving to Nottingham, a place called Snug. Those guys are really excellent. If uh, anyone's in the sort of this, you know, the area around here wants to find somewhere to go and record the stuff. Um, so initially, yes, so we would always do that in the studio. Then as time went on, I started to do more of the mixing and mastering uh, myself. And now at this point, again, uh, the f- so I think the last three albums I've done myself, but then for this l- this last album uh, that's going to be out in March, um, the record label have, uh, helped us out enormously and sent it off to this uh, a professional guy to sort of, you know, have a look at it and try and make it as best as as best you can do um because i think yeah I, i'm probably not the best at, at mastering i think i do okay but you know there's better people out there to do a better job i think so kind of outsource that element for sure yeah i think for me like the 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 studio side of it is something i really miss like we've we've been going into that same studio i think maybe we've tried another couple like throughout our time but um even even our we were in a band together pre-wolf club and we 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 used to go to that same studio and that whole like weekend where you'd be there, a few beers, maybe a night out after, um, getting the vocal down, getting every, you know, just the drums, everything, that whole vibe I do really, really miss, but you know, needs must at the end of the day. And, and also like as, as the, another thing, this pandemic's helped with me is completely upgraded my knowledge and my skill set in terms of being able to do this like it's not I've not just like bought a better mic and a better preamp and a better guitar like learning the whole idea of how to record a vocal properly um so so now I have this space um where you know I have endless takes um if you know I, I can't I, I mean sometimes I had endless takes at that studio but I'd get a few tuts get a few knocks on the glass and um, so, yeah, it's, it's been I, I miss the studio a lot, but I mean, will we ever go back to a studio? Pro- I mean, probably not now, um, like cost wise and maybe some things. Maybe something yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's always pretty to much again. The, the reason why Chris made his studio room, too, was we were just tired, especially from our experience in the past. Like we're just tired of waiting for people 
to do stuff that we can definitely just do ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Turnaround time's a big thing for sure in regards to that. Definitely, Andrew. Um, also, just I think there's something, uh, you know, I've been sort of self-teaching myself production for two years now, and there's just something about, like, getting that delay trail completely the way you want it or, you know, getting mm. that reverb exactly the way you want it, you know? But yeah. then my heart does go out to, like, all those great studios that I grew up playing in and, and just I wonder how they're going to recover. And and you're right. There is something so amazing about banging out that, like, you know, you got five, especially in the younger days, you know, you, you, you'd cram as many songs into a weekend as you can on that hourly yeah. rate. Yeah. You, you track a whole album in, in, like, you know, a whole weekend's worth and then go out with the boys afterwards and celebrate. And those are businesses. So, like, I'm curious, like, for your guys' experience, being people who are, I would say, professionals in the industry who have managed to survive uh, in the music industry for quite some time now, where do you see, like, when we finally get back out into open after this this uh, lockdown list, like, wh where do you see the studio having a place in, uh, in the industry? Or, or do you see that even being a thing anymore? Yeah, I think I do. I think... Um... I think for our genre, we, we have the kind of the luxury of having home studio, your home setups and things like that. But I think there's a lot of a lot of genres where you need that kind of, you know, that kind of atmosphere. Um, you need to have maybe four people playing together at the same time, you know, all the instruments going. Um, there's also people who, you know, who, who don't want to learn the production side of things, who don't want to learn to mix and master their own tracks. You know, like just a, a singer, for instance, or a vocalist who just wants to make a, a pop song, they're not going to have the ability to do that. So I do think it will come back, but I think, yeah, you're right. For for some genres where people have been pushed into making it themselves, for those individuals, I think it might be difficult to then go back to the other way. Because as you both said, the luxury of time is amazing when you can do it yourself. You can just spend, you know, a whole month every night staying up till three in the morning, just tweaking, you know, that snare sound a thousand times just so it's just right. And that those kind of things that kind of bother you to just kind of get to your own sort of levels of perfection. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think it might. Yeah. I think it might work both ways in a, in a certain way. Like for, for bands like us, like I'm, like you said, actually, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure if we'll go in a studio again because of the freedom. Like Steve just said, of like I can, I'll probably record a couple of demos like after this today, and if they don't work out, I'll delete them and then I'll do them again. It's no problem. But I think for, I think if we rewound maybe 10 years and we and this was happening and we were just about doing it we would have probably sort of got to a stage where we were just sort of starting to dabble and like well I'll try a little bit and but it's not at the level so we probably would have then gone into a studio so I wonder if maybe the studios can sort of um, bounce off that a little bit and try and get people in that have right. just sort of been introduced to because of the pandemic trying to home record but not quite not quite got there yet. Right. Or if anything, with all this, <clears throat> excuse me, with all this knowledge that's out there, like Chris has been teaching himself, if he, if studios can find a way to just essentially like rent out the space and then like yeah. Chris and me could go in yeah. and use their amazing equipment, but we're doing course, it ourselves yeah. or something. You know? I mean, then it's reminiscent of the old days. I'm sure you just rented for a certain amount of time, but I'm sure that there's something there you could do because if Chris wanted to, he could have, I mean, you know, right now it's a little different because of the pandemic, but he could have someone come in and recorded his house because he's got the studio room right there and it's like True. going to a studio but so yeah. i think that there's definitely still a way that studios can stay relevant in this kind of thing yeah i hope so i hope Same. so it'd be a real shame for that for it for for that to that, i mean it'd be a whole new generation of musicians that won't experience that and looking yeah. back like it's probably my probably my favorite even though we were terrible when we were like a full like drummer live musician band not terrible, but uh, yeah, terrible. Not, we weren't great. But um, my fav probably my favorite memories of being in a band, really, even that, even like being in films and all sorts of stuff. Like right, take it right back to being in a studio and tuning the guitar being out of tune and the drums taking like four hours to track the tom and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> right. Like it was, it was good times, good times. So I hope, I hope, I hope it comes back. But yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a struggle. I think, well, I think if anything, I'm oh, sorry, you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think they've adapted as well, because, for instance, um, when we have our vocals tuned a lot of the time, um, we can't do that ourselves. So we, we do outsource that. So that's one element where we send to a, stu a studio to do. So there's things like that. And then obviously for this new album, um, you know, the record label sent it off to a engineer to, uh, to sort of, you know, put the final master on, which was when it came back yeah. it was much better than what we did yeah, so that's a really good point there are those those parts that i think but yeah i think the, the maybe the start to finish the whole thing being done in the studio might be gone but um 
doing little elements here and there and then go back in the studio i think my right my still and i think that there are all those really popular and prolific songwriters out there like ryan tedder and max martin and stuff like that like they still i feel like if anything the studio will exist so that they have a place to meet up with artists because yeah, they're true. definitely the higher their whole job you know oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah, the big, yeah you're completely right for the yes i can't imagine uh some of the big pop stars will be recording stuff at home although i mean i, I guess we I, bet they are. I mean charlie they are. does it but well yeah. hey you know it's funny you brought up ryan tedder because i completely agree with your sentiment andrew but i actually just listened to a podcast with him and he has a whole second house on his property that is a studio so i think well, a lot of them have these giant luxurious right. like dave grohl well, have you guys ever seen a, like any of the what is this yeah, what is what is a, what is got a, a professional neat console studio. in his house yeah. <laughs> what is a professional studio but just a really big building with all of the recording equipment in there true yeah very it's true really just a location yeah. So speaking of that, um, you guys are kind of interesting because I'm curious and I understand the whole machine that is new retro wave and how they sort of propel the genre forward. But I, I just because we've been on independent labels uh, twice before, Andrew and I, and not that there wasn't good things that came from it, but I do feel like they sort of halted our progress after a certain amount of time by having to go through that chain of command. And you guys being so self-sufficient, being able to write, record, produce, seemingly get the whole, you know, the artwork, everything done by yourself. What was um, what was sort of the impetus, impetus to sign there? And sort of how did you see that progressing the project further? Because clearly it has. But I'm curious about that decision and if you kind of weigh the options of staying independent versus uh, signing up with them. Of course, yeah, sure. So it's yeah, it's a kind of a long story, really. But um, I think when I when I first started, started going into the genre, um, there was like there were two main things that kind of really got me into retro wave, and uh, the the first one was the Valerie Collective. So you know, College, Anorak, Electric Youth, um, they were putting out some records that were just amazing. So them, um, Italians do it better. The YouTube channel is amazing as well, and the record label there. And then the other one was New Retro Wave. So that was. It's kind of one of the first things that introduced me to the genre and what I fell in love with. And then I kind of basically spent, you know, every day I'd, I'd go on there and see if there was a new track um, that would feature. Um, I think I must have submitted about, you know, 700 tracks or so. They never they never got a place on the channel because I was desperate to try and get on there. Um, so then the, the day that we did was just an amazing day for me to finally, you know, have a track that would be heard by, you know, a few thousand people or more, which was amazing. Um, and they've kind of put out some of the records, my favorite records from different bands. So I think, yeah, we, we, I was just over the moon when we got signed to them for, for Infinity, which was the first record we put out of them. Uh, and they've been amazingly supportive. I think they can just do so many things for you. In, I mean, obviously there's artists who can do everything themselves, which is amazing, but I think they've been amazing at getting us out there. Um, you know, the YouTube channel has great reach. Social uh, media channels they have have great reach as well. Uh, they've actually they they were the ones who always put together the artwork for us as well for the last three records with signal noise um which was which was brilliant um they kind of help us i think i think the first album was pretty much completely done and they were happy with that then i remember on i think was it frontiers chris that we he kind of came back with a few notes about tracks he didn't think were strong enough and then when when i looked back at them i actually completely agreed that i think there's two or three tracks that i was like well actually no he's right they aren't good enough so that kind of pushed me and Chris further to try and create like a new, uh, two new tracks to replace those. And one of, of which was Electrify, which was like the first single and probably one of my favorite songs from that album. Um, and then again, for Runaways, uh, had a few notes and then again, went back and then tweeted different things and, and you know, made the songs better. And then for this last record, they've been, they've got even further this time and helped us with, uh, you know, the engineering side, the artwork again. And um, yeah, and then- NPR this time. And PR really yes, helps us yes, with a right. with a with a proper PR campaign and stuff. So I think yeah. I think for me it's it's just yeah. I mean the reach that they have, the 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 um, the networking that they have, etc. Is is just it's just probably something at the moment that we that we. I mean we've got better at, and we've we've got definitely got a better reach now. But but then for sure we didn't have. I mean we did we weren't really anywhere before we got that one track. On their channel and then they were fortunate enough to be signed by them but i mean never say never it's not like we you know we're not tied into a thousand album deal with them or anything we, we and they're and they're super supportive with us and always listening to us so so we'll see but but for now for sure they're they're, they're great with us no yeah it seems like it was uh just a positive 
uh, sort of infrastructure to get at the point in time. And uh, I think it's obviously done well for you guys. So I'm always curious about that as someone who uh, has taken that leap of faith before and looks back on it with uh, mixed signals, but perhaps um, maybe you guys were in a little more of a right place, right time sort of uh, situation. So yeah. that's cool. I mean, absolutely. Um, and- Sometimes it can be just right for you to do, you know, to go your own way. And I think there's plenty of bands and, and things that do that. Um, I think, yeah, the larger your fan base, I guess, the more you, you can be self-sufficient, can't you, I guess, you know, you, you, you've already, if you've already got that sort of like thing to fall back on. Um, but yeah, I think for us, it was just nice to have um, kind of that support and that kind of uh, a bit of guidance and a bit of, you know, because we're kind of a bit fresh to the industry in a way, even though we've been writing songs and doing things as a band. Uh, I'm not, I'm not particularly business minded, sadly. And it's one of the things that kind of, I kind of struggle with. Um, Chris, you're a bit better yeah. than, than me, I think. Yeah. It's something we've had to learn. Like the whole, like, like we were in bands, you know, MySpace era and, and that whole like sort of social media, YouTube chat, like, New Retro Wave have like 1.2 million YouTube subscribers. So to which, if you'd have told me that, you know, five, ten years ago, or whatever, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have really considered that anything, or not, not in terms of numbers. I just didn't know what it was. So we've, I think we both learn a lot about social media. Like, we, I mean, me and Steve had a chat about algorithms like most days, and like Spotify and whatever. <laughs> I still and, don't know what it means. And, yeah, and, and, and <laughs> nobody does. No. New retro wave, you, you know, I mean, they trigger all our algorithms essentially, you know, with with their Spotify channels, their YouTube channel, except, you know, it's it's massive for us. And but like we said again, like you know, never say never. But um, for now, they 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 do it's the truth. And yeah. thanks for being so open and honest about that, guys. Appreciate it. We like to get a little deeper onto like the more techie side, business side of things sometimes. So mm-hmm. um, I guess there, there is an education behind the curtain. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So appreciate appreciate that. Um, so the the last thing I kind of want to ask you guys about before we sort of wrap things up, and uh, thanks again so much for your time this evening, is the different vocalists across all the different tracks. Um, that's something that I was, I guess, I had hinted at, but like you said, sometimes you don't really put the names of the feature on the tracks itself. Uh, so sort of talk about that. How do you go about sort of finding? each singer for said track do they have full creative autonomy are you sort of guiding them i'm curious about all of it to be honest with you so sure yeah no problem um so yeah i think one of the first vocalists we worked with outside the band um was indigo she's from new zealand she's got an amazing voice so she's sang um night wave uh, can't stop falling in love you know a bunch of those tracks um yeah she, she's fantastic um we've also had uh, dora um singing a bunch of tracks as well. so she's done um a sea of stars recently and we've got uh, jackie nelson she sang on uh all we live for and a bunch of new tracks on the new album as well um and so basically we kind of we kind of uh you know search search around to find a vocal find vocalist that we kind of want to work with whose voices that we loved and that kind of thing um and then we, we basically put to them and said how would you like to go about this would you prefer to be a ghost vocalist because that's what you know services they offer or is it better for you if you want to be a featured artist? And then basically just on whatever they said, whatever the, whatever, whatever their preference was is what we do. Um, so for the most part on the new album, I think every vocalist near about is, is a featured vocalist, uh, except for maybe one who uh, she chose not to have a name featured on it. Because a lot of the time they have their own projects that they're working on that they want to you know kind of keep you know pure uh, so they can focus on that, but they like to hire out the voice um, you know, uh, to perform on tracks, basically. Um, and as it went, well, uh, in terms of uh, writing it, so me and Chris write, write the vocal lines, uh, the vocal melodies, and then we send them off to the singer uh, to then, you know, put their stamp on. But, you know, all credit to them. We, we write the songs, but they do amazing work in terms of giving it that power or, the, you know, the, the different tones they give it. So, um, yeah, and credit where credit's due. It, it really, I think, enhances our sound to have them featured on it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes sometimes I'll record. So I'm I do a lot of the vocals. But um, sometimes I'll record a track and I'll send it back to Steve, and we'll both listen and we'll go, no, it's not quite, it's not, it's just not right, is it? So, we'll, and then we'll go, Dora, Dora for sure for that track or whoever it may be, and then we'll send it them, and then, and then, and then, I mean, even sometimes we've done that and then mixed our vocals together and just to see, yeah, and see what see what that sounds like, and we end up with end up with duets which weren't necessarily planned before we did it, 
Um, but yeah, just I like for, for me, I like the feeling how it's almost like um, like each album's like almost like a greatest hits of like just all different tracks or like a comp not greatest hits. That sounds terrible. Like a compilation album. So it's uh, you know different vocalists, different tones, different styles for, for and you could go you could have sort of four tracks in a row that are just all completely different, um, but somehow like have like a similar style, which which I, I absolutely love when I listen to our records. Yeah, there are a lot of hits though. I don't think you were wrong there. Although I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say, everyone yeah. sounds like a greatest hit. That's the worst thing I've ever said. But that's yeah, like a guitarist. <laughs> that's like a guitarist saying that he can shred. Exactly. <laughs> you, said, yeah. you said both of those things today, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, about, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll take that. That's hilarious, guys. <laughs> no, I, confidence, I, right? That, that's interesting. That's a really cool uh, creative process um, because you know a lot of genre uh, artists in this genre have instrumental tracks, and and I haven't really come across many if any from you guys in what i've listened to so and there's always a different yeah, voice now we so do. we don't have any to do with that we've released um i don't think so no i think there was talk at one point about releasing an instrumental album of you know of the tracks that we've re you know released with the vocal taken out um but then when, when i listened back to them for the most part it just didn't really sit right but we have had lots of requests for that so i don't know if it's something we might do at some point, try you know, release you know an album of ten tracks, for instance, with like our favorite instrumentals of those tracks that had vocals previously, but just taking them out. It might be an interesting thing they might do down the line. But just take all of the vocal melodies and do them either with a guitar solo or a saxophone. Uh, that's a good idea, or, or both, or <laughs> both at the same time. Yeah. Both at the same time, just yeah. a wall of yeah. noise. Not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Listen, there are people out there that like to listen to a wall of noise. <laughs> yes. My included, roommate yeah. is one of them. I don't. I don't really get it, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's for oh, some people. Man. So, guys, before we sort of jump into a set question, we normally ask all of our guests: Is there anything we may have missed on your journey? Um, we will touch upon what the future holds for you guys after said question. So, don't think we forgot to ask you about that. But is there anything looking back that we might have uh, missed out on or that you want to further elaborate on? Did we talk about how you guys met? Oh, oh yeah, 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 we didn't... did. No, we didn't. Yeah, I don't think we did, did we? we oh, Andrew, I'd love to know that. Yeah, we've been <laughs> we've been friends a long, long time. Our mums used to work together, and we were like forced. Well, I said we're forced friends. Yeah, you said that a few kids. times. Yeah, you see, <laughs> you have a. Yeah, see, that's ouch. a bad thing about me saying this, but we were forced. You said, friends. You said twice already. It's like yeah, we were forced um, to be friends. I was like, that's not that's not nice. Yeah, we were. Well, you're not we forced were. now, <laughs> right? Well, well I mean, I guess you're under contract. Contractually advised and friends. Contractually yeah. friends, but yeah. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, we 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 didn't go to the same school, but we, yeah, mums worked together and we used to, I think the first time we were like maybe 11, 12 or something when our mums sort of had a, you know, go and spend the day with them in like a half term or whatever it was when we were off school. And then um yeah i don't know how you met so we we also we have like a third sort of member like of the band mm -hmm. called tim who who doesn't do any of the writing and stuff but but joins us on stage live a lot of the time and tim i don't know how you met tim steve but i was i did go to school with tim so he yeah, was sort so, of the linchpin yeah <laughs> so, the... So tim's, yeah tim's one of my best friends from being a kid so uh, my mum and his mum again forced friends uh so we kind of <laughs> together. So I've, known, I've known him since i was about i think about three years old so he's yeah, so kind of best friends. You know, I was the best man at his wedding. Not to brag, um, <laughs> humble brag, humble brag. You know, good old Tim. Damn, um, gotta thank your mom and, for finding all your friends. I know, yeah. That's a great yeah. mom. Steve was the best. Pretty great. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's cool. That's pretty much how me and Chris became friends. It was like we met a couple times, but we had one friend Tyler in common that we kept hanging out mm -hmm. with together, and then Tyler moved away, and here we are. Yeah, yeah, mutual yeah, friends, yeah. and it's like, hey, just because he's not here anymore, it doesn't mean we we can't still hang, right? And Andrew's sure. like, I guess, yeah, why not? Don't just make Tyler it weird. Out. It's so... Tyler okay. He's a bit <laughs> oh, oh no. he's doing, Tyler's he's doing great. just fine. He's great. Yeah, he's yeah, off yeah. in uh, California, yeah. living living his life oh, wow. uh, and living well. So yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah. asking. Enjoy your stage live. <laughs> yeah, one day, one day. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Hey, he's a great singer, so that I would not be opposed to that. Perfect. This was great, guys. Really appreciate it. I had a wow, good time yeah. chatting with you. Very much so. Looking forward to your record, March 5th, Just Drive, part one of a two-part series coming out. 
very excited mm-hmm. so far i've loved everything you guys have thrown our way so uh hey you know feel free to come back on and promote that when it comes out or for part two we'd love to have you back on the door is uh yeah, it's always open sure. now so 100 yeah, sure. yeah i really appreciate it so andrew do you have a final question to ask our guests here before we let them go for the evening no pressure well chris i know that you just set me up to ask the one question so yeah i do have a question um oh, if you i guess you guys will each get an answer um if you had to describe yourselves whether individually or i guess the two of you together if you had to describe yourselves as artists creatives musicians makers of things what one word would you pick and then you can elaborate on that word but you'll each you can each oh. get a word wow and you know you, you can you think go. about it we can we can edit out silences i'm gonna <laughs> say the word dancer Oh, I'm, a, I'm a great dancer. That's a first. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Also, that's not, that's not yeah, that's not also a definite well, lie. A liar. Yeah. I would say so. His word is liar. Liar. Oh my god! I'd say I meant myself probably. What, what word did you say, Stephen? I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, a songwriter. I think I would say. Songwriter. I mean, that's, that's probably how I view myself. I think that's nice. What about you, Chris? Ah, oh, it's a really good question. Um. He's like, I was going to say songwriter. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I guess, I mean, I've sort of nicked what Steve's going to say, but I'm going to say like performer, but I only just say that because I don't, like, I've, when we do like live stuff, because it's sort of quite electronic driven, I do think it's like really, really important that we like do like a bit of a show. And so like that ability just to sort of jump around and dance a bit is, is something I've really tried to like take on board in the, like, I, so, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hit with performer. Very Honestly, cool. I think that's really cool because the way we've got the screen divided, I think that Chris and I could also be categorized as songwriter and performer. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. Steve, um, elaborate on why you chose songwriter. I think it's just um, just from when I, when I was a kid. And, you know, I think I picked up a guitar when I was about 11 um, after hearing Nirvana play, you know, for a, an old cassette uh, tape player again and again and again and kind of inspired me to sort of pick up guitar start writing and then yes yeah, time went on was still writing but then found different tools to write um yeah so i think it's just i think that's the main the main thing that i enjoy the best the, the most about it i'd say it's probably just you know sitting down with whatever i've got whether it be the laptop or a guitar or just trying to you know think of something to yeah to sing about or to you know to rhyme about or any of that kind of thing yeah very well, cool i mean songwriter performer is sounds like a great duo for musical success so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think Point you guys pace, are, on, are on the right track yeah guys thank you again so much for uh joining us and hanging yeah. out with us tonight why don't you tell this our audience so where awesome. they can find you and keep up to date with everything wolf club oh, thanks guys uh so you can find us at wolf club one on facebook and then what's our Instagram? Is that Wolf Club Band, isn't it? On Wolf Club Band, Instagram, uh, Wolf Club Band, Twitter, Wolf Club, pretty much everywhere. You'll find us if you Google it somewhere. Um, and usually, yeah, W W space O space. Uh, you know, yeah. Space sometimes, space. sometimes yeah. there's a space. Yeah, sometimes it's eight there isn't. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> which yeah, it's, it's, it's a sore point. <laughs> but yeah, we'll let. I, mean, I, I insisted, and you weren't keen, were you? But hey. We are so but, as well. Uh, but yeah, you you find us find us on pretty much now. You can find us just type in normal Wolf Club anywhere. So um, I can yeah, confirm thanks... if you type in Wolf Club without all the spaces on Spotify, they will pop up. Phew, yes, good, they didn't perfect. used to algorithms. Trigger, you guys <laughs> exactly <laughs> triggering those algorithms. algorithms. <laughs> We did it. Amazing, guys. Thank SEO you so much for the win. Um, yes. Again, their record Just Drive will be out part one March fifth check it out on new retro wave um it was really great time chatting with you guys thanks again for thanks all so the guys. wisdom so and, and fun times thanks so much thanks guys cheers cheers all right andrew that was a blast man another solid another episode one. in the books dare i say amazing episode week after week you know it's fun week having after more week. Than one guest it is i like when we have the two pieces on because i mean at that point you might as well have both members on get the full experience well, you know we just got the know? full wolf club if experience if you're gonna have the songwriter you might as well have the performer too you know that is true the songwriter and the performer th- that sounds like my favorite know, backgrounds I'm from D D. yeah it sounds like yeah i like that i'm gonna <laughs> use that for something andrew speaking of uh D, when a bunch of fun things like that i mean we have a lot planned for the podcast hint hint nudge That's nudge true, in a few true. in a few weeks coming up rather quickly so what do you want the people to know about all this stuff andrew 
Uh, well, I mean, if about the D&D specifically, I can uh, tell you that as the guy coming up with the story and going to be in charge of the story, I think it's going to be a fun time, and I'm going to have these guys in some interesting predicaments. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. We have some uh, former guests of the show who will be guests on the series. It's going to be a blast. We hope to see you there. More details on that in the coming weeks. Uh, this mm -hmm. was awesome, guys. This is uh, We're doing a whole gambit of interviews here for the spring and yeah, was so blessed and honored to speak to not only Wolf Club, but so many amazing artists. And so if you guys like Synthwave, if you guys want more of sort of getting to know the artists that you love, we have interviews with New Arcades, um, Surge, Lao, uh, you know, Aztec Records, uh, Sunglasses Kids, all that stuff coming down the pipeline. Talking with Andrew and Chris will be your place to get that in the next few weeks, if not already in our back catalog at your time of hearing this, depending on who you're looking for, as well as so many other interviews coming up. So uh, follow us, please, if, if you wouldn't mind. We'd greatly appreciate please. that. You can find us anywhere that matters at Talkin Podcast. Talkin spelled T-A-L-K-I-N, no G. That's no Talkin. T-A-L-K-I-N, no G. Andrew, they can listen to us and watch us somewhere. I'm forgetting though. Please help me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if Thanks, you're man. listen, if you're listening, then you already know that we're on all of the digital streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Radio Public, Stitcher, uh, Richer, Litcher, uh, Spreaker, you know, Spreaker, um, all of Radio those fun Public, ones. Uh, Google Podcasts, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Yeah, Wherever people are talking into microphones, we're probably going to be there. Um, yeah, if and, and, if, and if you this, guys are there, you can help us peak our algorithms there. Yes, by trigger those algorithms. leaving a review. Trigger those algorithms. And if you're watching this, then you already know that you can watch us on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash talking with Andrew and Chris. No mm -hmm. G again. Um, we've got the video episodes of every podcast on there. And, you know, and we follow come to us you... on the social medias. Yeah, we come to you every week. Uh, hell or high water at this point. So, and while you're looking at all that great talking podcast stuff, you might as well look at the talking TV stuff that Chris does too. Because, <laughs> dude, it's seriously, a whole you're too kind. And also, this. I hate to break it to you, Dom never shouts our show out, so I don't want you to feel like you're like you know getting too kind <laughs> or anything here. <laughs> But I do, I do always appreciate it. I do have another podcast, guys, called Talkin' TV. Talkin' again, spelled T-A-L-K-I-N, no G, a part of the Talkin' Podcast Network. We obviously talk about all things film, television, uh, but we like to go a little deeper. We like to use our film school backgrounds and our knowledge of, of film, and even in Dom's case, working in film, to sort of bring something more to the table than your typical YouTube or podcast reviewer. So if you're into that type of thing, you can find us anywhere that matters, Talkin' TV podcast talking spelled the way you see it all over the screen and thanks again andrew for always shouting that out it does mean a lot i hope that you and dom have a productive conversation when you inevitably bring that up to him <laughs> but i do appreciate you always shouting that out and Listen, maybe i just don't pay for Streamyard one month yeah Ooh, that's a protest <laughs> money talks protest. money talks all right well uh andrew let's uh let's get out of here and let them uh sort of get to more of our episodes shall we i think that's a good idea and remember stay sweet Stay sweet, guys. Mm -hmm.